So just hold on. Uh, let me see the leash. Okay. You can let her go. Okay. You can stay there. Let's see. So she's definitely very on the defensive. So it's okay. Okay. And so this is the problem, right? So that's why we're gonna go into the part of desensitizing her, exactly for this reason right here. You can tell that she's comfortable with me just standing here and giving her space, but any changes, she gets triggered again, and then she becomes defensive. Uh, and this is because she's been kind of like, you, you, you have already had her for three years, right? And you have mm -hmm. trying to work with her, trying to get her to warm up to new things, but she's kind of in a bubble. This means she hasn't really learned to face anything new. Mm -hmm. And so she has a lot, a lot of potential. If I just work with her from a distance like this, I call this keeping them in a bubble. So she's gonna continue to be in a bubble. That means any new thing that triggers her, she does what she just did again. And it's always a problem. You can never completely trust her. Now taking her to the next level would be that I'm going to desensitize her to the touch. I can move in different ways and she not be triggered by that. Um, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna put her like in a lockdown so my hands can go on her. The first thing that I did is just make it ineffective. So see, the first thing she did is lay down because she doesn't know what to do with herself. Okay. Now every dog is different. Mm -hmm. I kind of go based on what I think is gonna be the most appropriate approach for them. Um, she's still going to be on the defensive because she's very afraid. How long have you had her? Uh, she came on our porch in 2020, right at the start of COVID. Okay, so like three years already. Yeah. Okay, so. come. Good. Um, she's just nervous oh, now, which yeah. is, yeah. She's literally peeing herself. And that's why you see a lot of these dogs like really afraid. She's like, she's so afraid of what's gonna happen to her, right? Mm -hmm. Now I did, that was the first time. Now I kind of put them in a lockdown. So of course, if I just go like to pet her like this, she's gonna try to bite, mm -hmm. which is what she did the first time just for me going down. I went down to her level and she tried to bite me. Yeah. So now come, again, I put her in a lockdown. It's okay. Good. As she starts to relax, I start to relax. Good girl. That's it, good. So I'm teaching her that when my hand goes on her, nothing's gonna happen. Now you see that she does freeze. And again, this is a dog that for years and years, she's been living in fears. It's very intense. She doesn't believe that, that she can trust anyone. She really truly believes that when my hand goes on her, the worst thing is gonna happen. Yeah. Like this one, she's gonna die. So that's why she's so on the, like, on the defensive and she's willing to fight for her life. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much what you see, yeah. is when she feels like she has to lash out and attack me, she will do it before I attack her. That's how she sees that. Now, you trying to convince her that that's not gonna happen, she doesn't understand. She has to see it for herself. That's why this method that I'm doing here right now, it's okay. It's okay. Good. This is the most effective. And it's very tricky. It's not that you just do one little thing and she's gonna be, lose her fear. These, these dogs are very delicate to work with them. But again, when you try for many, many years with us, all different methods and it's not effective, you know, I know that this method is effective because I do it all the time with different dogs. But there is no easy way to just make this dog lose her fear overnight either. So, come. Sit. So I'm going to do a couple of things. A lot of redirecting her attention, which is one, something that I'm going to pass to you. So, Coda, come. Yes, good girl. Come. Coda, sit. Yes, good. Coda, come. Good. Coda, come. Sit. Getting them to be comfortable following direction is really good. Now, what I say by comfortable, it's not that she's excited right now to follow directions. And it's not just me. I'm a new person. There's all the new things around her, new environment. She's nervous. So she's going to be as comfortable as she can possibly be, but it's better than a dog that's not actually following directions. Now I have to now, she's already doing good with that. So that I don't take credit for it. She's already doing her commands and all that. I know that in the beginning though, she wasn't really listening to you when I was yeah. close to you. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say now is we have to get her to continue continue to listen like this when there's other distractions. So other dogs and other people. Coda, come. Come. Sit. Yes. Okay, so what we wanna do is make sure that we're being very direct and on point with her. Right now she has a lot of confusion already on her own. If we give her that impression that whenever she doesn't know how to handle a certain situation, we don't give her directions, she's gonna feel like she needs to be defending herself. Okay. You know, that's basically what she does right now. So instead, if I'm going to pass by any type of distraction, if I just say, hey, let's go. Like I'm being very direct, very on point with her and just leading the way, this alone is going to give her a lot more confidence. Because I'm teaching her like she doesn't have to worry about it. 
Now, at first, it's just giving her directions, like forgetting about the other dogs, people, whatever. Like, we're just giving her directions. Okay. Now, if she sees a dog and we see that she's getting uncomfortable for whatever reason, and I'm going to give you some common uh, things and situations that make your dog uncomfortable. Now, if you see that, it's very important that we're redirecting her attention. Right now, she's actually pretty neutral. She's nervous. She's looking for a way out. But this means, like, she's not really looking at this dog, oh, I'm going to attack you. Not yet or no one else around her. If we see that, that's her basically saying, I don't know how to handle this, and then her instinct is kicking in and she's gonna become defensive. Okay. If we see that, we wanna tell her, no, leave it, come, and give her a way out, just like this. Okay. See, before, you're trying to almost tell her to sit and stay there, you can sit, 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 mm -hmm. and it's too difficult for her because she's very triggered by the fact that I'm a new person and I'm walking close to you. Yeah. And so it's very hard for her to just listen to you and ignore her intense fear that she has. So instead, if someone anyone right now, a person or a dog starts to walk towards me and I can see like right there, see there's a dog coming, watch this. See her, her ears, she's like getting reactive already, come. So what I'm gonna do is redirect her attention. So because I'm giving her a way out like this, it makes it so much easier for her to be around a dog. Okay. The dog passed by, nothing happened. Now the, the whole thing is that we have to maintain this all the time. So that, mean, that means every time we go out, we're always watching our surroundings and act accordingly. Right now, she's just neutral. She's a nervous dog. She, again, she's not going, nothing in the world is going to come here right now and make her get excited, right? But as long as she's making progress, which means she's no longer reacting and lunging and you're no longer confused and she's no longer confused. This is great. She's getting curious right now. She sees all these dogs around her. There's all these dogs around her and she's doing great. She's like looking around. You know, and it's, again, it's always a work in progress. It's not something that ha gets fixed overnight. It's just important that every time we come out, we are making progress, okay. which means we're not, no longer letting her see dogs come and mm -hmm. come, Psh, leave it. That's it. Literally just moving her around. Come. Good girl. Good job. So then I go, Psh, leave it. Yes, good job. What a good girl. And then we reordered her. That was great. That was really good. Now, as soon as she did pass by the dogs, what did I do? I reordered her. I showed her, yeah, that's all you have to do. You don't have to have any concern about this dog. You don't have to have a reaction. But we have to continue to manage this all the time. And you can tell every time a new dog comes, she starts to get con concerned again. Yeah. It's the best way to describe it. That she gets concerned because she's afraid. She doesn't know how to handle it. And dogs become afraid like this for many different reasons. So maybe she was attacked before you got her. Maybe she was chased by another dog. Maybe she just wasn't socialized. There's literally so many things that can make your dog afraid of different things but all that matters is she's afraid so understanding that is really important and then understanding how to make her feel more comfortable you know you basically won't be able to sit her at a table and say come on you don't have to be afraid I'm promising you she won't <laughs> understand that now the reason that this works on the other hand is because she's seen the dogs there she doesn't have to have a reaction. Dogs are passing right by her. But I can 100% guarantee you, if I just hold on to her leash here and I don't give her a way out, she's gonna continue to practice the same thing. Okay. Which is basically what she has been doing. There's many different scenarios that you handle a little bit differently. Like whether you're walking by or a dog is coming to, you know, by your house or a person's coming to your house. We're gonna to try to address some of those different uh, scenarios. So right now, let's go ahead and walk towards the bigger dog park. Okay. Your main homework is going to be to basically make the situation a little bit easier for her to handle. Meaning you don't have to rush her, you don't have to have people petting her right away or her playing with other dogs yet. Because this type of exercise that we're, do we're doing right now is great to build confidence. She's, as long as she's around people and dogs and you're able to walk pretty close to them without a reaction, without her getting too afraid, we're making progress. Because the way that this is working is uh, you're building positive association with her triggers. So right now dogs and people are a trigger for her. She's has a negative association with them. We're building positive association by basically just giving her a way out, giving her directions. Yes, good girl. What a good girl. You're doing great. She's nervous, but yes, good. Good job. Okay, so she's doing really good. I like her body language in general. The tail is still down. Again, this doesn't get fixed overnight, but I'm looking at, at the entire dog, right? So mm -hmm. um, she's actually looking around. She's getting a little bit curious, like kind of like exploring, but like, hmm, what are all these dogs here? What are they doing? What's going on? So it's all a good sign for, for given the circumstances, given, you know, uh, a, that she's a dog like she is, like years of fear that we're uh, trying to solve. There's a lot of dogs here today. One of the things that you do have to pay attention to is her eyes. 
So right now, see how it's neutral? She's looking around, you know, um, pretty good, again, given all her, <laughs> the, the specifics for her. I have to say that all the time, otherwise, obviously she's a nervous dog, and you know, people are gonna be like, she's not comfortable. She is com comfortable given how fearful she normally is and how reactive she is. Now, I'm gonna give you an example. That's this dog coming right now. And I'm not gonna give her a way out, just so you can see the difference. I'm just gonna let her do her thing. Now, right there, she's looking, she's getting concerned. She's mm -hmm. getting more concerned. And then she kind of gave up. She, she looked away on, on her own. Now, this, when a dog does this, it's her basically choosing not to be reactive. Now, I didn't do anything about it, which mm -hmm. is good and bad. It's good because she didn't react. But it's bad if you don't, don't ever do anything because she made that choice. That dog wasn't a problem for her. But if it was a different dog, maybe they looked at her a little bit more. Maybe the dog was bigger or male, female. Whatever it was that triggered her, that look that she was giving, she was like, Why is, who is this dog? You know? Yeah. So because she's already a reactive dog that have problems problems with others, you don't want to give her that chance to become too uncomfortable that, that then she reacts. You know, normally she reacts pretty much 100% of the time. So you're not going to give her that chance. You're not gonna, going to wait for her to react. Instead, until we know that we have done enough exercises that basically she's doing great right now, but until we know that this is going to be consistent, we are going to always redirect her. Okay. So as soon as the dog comes, we're not correcting her, we're not punishing her, we're just telling her, hey, do this instead. Come this way instead. Okay. That's all. Because what that does is it alleviates the tension for her. It's no longer the same as a dog coming into her space. And, and again, I say this all the time, you don't have to cross the street and run and hide. Literally just this, come. That's it. It's a little bit of redirecting. So if a dog was right there, even though they're really close to her, just because I did this right here and I moved her out of the way, it made it so much easier. Let me show you again, just like this. Come, that's it. So I'll show you in some scenarios where a dog is closer to her and all we have to do is this. She feels like she was given a way out, even though it didn't really go anywhere. It just kind of got her attention away from the dog. So right now, just hanging out a little bit closer to the other dogs. Okay. She's doing really good though. Like I said, getting curious. Despite being nervous, uh, what I say by being good is I always pay attention to the dog's intentions and she has no intentions of getting aggressive right now, which is progress. Whenever a dog starts to, then, good girl. If they come to her face, kind of just redirect your attention a little bit. Okay. Until we have done enough rounds that we know she's actually comfortable with it. Corey, come. Sit. Yes, good girl. Yep, and then just kind of walk a little bit back and forth. Let's go. Right, come on, Cora. So good, I like it. Go ahead, give her a way out. Yeah. So you're gonna be a little bit more on top of that. I see face to face is very confrontational for her. Okay. And you can tell she froze that for a second. So if you don't, you did good, but it took a little bit too long. Yeah. You always want to be very proactive with giving her direction. Okay. Uh, also, you don't want it to come across like a correction. You don't want to be like, oh, there's a dog coming, and you yank her. Mm -hmm. You want to do it just casually telling her to do something else. So there's okay. a difference. So your tone and the amount of pressure and your energy is gonna be very calm. You're just telling her, hey, come on, let's go this way. You know, okay. before she even fixates on the dog. Good, keep going. Yeah, and the busier you keep her too, like moving around, kind of okay. giving her something to focus on, other than the distractions around her, like especially the other dogs, the okay. easiest it is for her. Okay. So yeah, like move a little bit faster, uh, switch directions more often. Very nice. Go, let's go. Come on. I am dog daddy. Are you really? Yeah. You're amazing. Thank you. Is this your beautiful dog over here? Yeah. I'm helping that one right now. She's a little fearful of other uh, other dogs and people. Does she aggressively go at them? She uh, just started today working with her. She's doing pretty good right now. But yeah, before she was on the defensive. That's what I was explaining to the owner. She has a Mazda one right now. But she's a rescue that showed up at her perch. Cora, um, no. And yeah, we just, I'm just helping her out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I wish you. Oh, let's go. Yeah. Come on.
Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was going crazy, so this is pretty good for her. Look, she's having dogs around off leash. Like literally before she was just lunging at everybody. Yeah. Nice to see you. Augusto. 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 Yes. Jen. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Okay. Keep her moving. Okay. That will really help her a lot. Okay. Come on, Cora. Good. So if someone comes close to you, that's what you need to do. You keep redirecting her. You don't let her fixate on them. Okay. So see, you, you can come all the way, but see, because he's approaching me and I'm not just holding tight, watch, she's getting a little nervous. All you have to do is redirect her attention. Good, come. If you keep redirecting her attention like this, it makes it so much easier for her. Then essentially you can get her very close to the person. Oh dog. Sit. Just like that. Again, she's nervous, but that's her first time meeting him. Leave it. Yes. Sit. Leave it. Thank you. You're welcome. So, so that was really good for her. That's a big task. Now you can tell with a new group of people coming towards her, she got very intimidated at first, sit, but she didn't react. Yeah, it's good. It's like, it's cl a lot clearer than other <laughs> methods I've been taught where, you know, it's, it's far more like honed in than the other things that I've been told before. So, because we've been told to redirect, but it was like just the way to do it wasn't very clear. So this is a lot better. It's nice to just keep moving and know that she she is uh, she's good. <laughs> you think it's reinforceable? You think you can do it at home? What I showed you? Yeah, definitely. It's not too hard. <laughs>